All right, everyone. So what we need to do now is to talk about... Um, there are a couple of little um, items that I want to mention, and I'll have a handout for us that goes into detail. But for the moment, I just want to give you a quick overview based on the different blogs that I've shown here. They have a lot of... they're obviously about different concepts, but a lot of them have the same sorts of uh, of details. For example, if I pull up any one of these blogs from any one of these clients, uh, something that is common to them all is there is an aspect of social media to them. So I'm going to write some notes here. And again, I'll have this on another handout a little later, but I'm going to say common, I'll say common factors of a of an effective blog post. Now, the term blog itself often can be used to refer to all of the articles, the blog, or an individual article, a blog. And so I'll try to differentiate them, but I easily say each of them back and forth. So an effective blog post often has also the ability for um, uh, social media sharing is easy. Do you notice on these articles that I'm showing up here, they all have a way to also share them on social media. The article is there, but then you can also tweet it. You can like it on Facebook. You can share it anywhere else. You can pin it on Pinterest. So notice here, this particular article has this amount of activity on Facebook. Uh, nothing just yet on Google+. Twitter used to release the number, but now they, they don't anymore. That's annoying. Uh, but Facebook tells you this has been liked or shared 658 times on Facebook. More people have started to see it on Facebook. So we're going to say uh, social media sharing is easy. It's a way to spread your post to more people. If I'm writing this article because I want more people to, uh, to read the articles to then go into and click the ads, well, social media will help me get this out to more people. If I'm trying to sell a product on my website, well, using social media, again, reaches more people. This is a captive audience. So making it easy to share on social media. How to do that? Well, that's going to depend on your particular site. It's going to depend on is it made in WordPress, is it made in Joomla, is it made in Wix, etc. It's going to depend on your site. Another effective factor or a common factor here, is subscriptions. We want the ability for people to be able to subscribe to your blog. You write something and then you're going to have people come back because if they read one thing, did they, was that successful that they read one thing? Most likely you're going to want them to read multiple things. You're going to want them to read one article, and another article and another. Well, will that mean that they will remember to come back to your site next time there's a new article? Probably not. That's why there's a way to have people subscribe to your blog. Um, that's another thing that... How do you do it? Well, it's going to depend on your particular website. Is there a way for them to easily subscribe or in a complicated way or anything like that? So subscriptions. One thing that I'll say about that is always think in terms about how can you entice people to subscribe. If they simply have, if you simply have a button on your website that says subscribe, that might not be as effective because you're asking the person, give me your email. And I don't want to give my email, I get too much spam already. So for subscriptions, how can you entice people to give you their email. So instead of simply having a little box that says subscribe, 
we could have something like subscribe for the latest articles, subscribe for exclusive content, subscribe to keep up to date. You know, have something like that. Or not e you don't even have to use the keyword subscribe. You could use, say something like keep up to date and then just a box for them to put their email. Or have something like um, do you want to be part of our group and then have a little box. So some way to entice people. Here's an example. Um, over at Fry's Electronics. I really like Fry's. They've got lots of great technology. I like technology. And what they do there is they entice you to subscribe to their newsletter because I'm going to get exclusive coupons. So some exclusivity. Subscribe for exclusive content. And so when I subscribe to Fry's, I get a newsletter every day that tells me what's the latest. And I have to be very careful to read those emails because I always want to buy something. And it has a lot of great detail, a lot of great deals for great prices, and it's my exclusive coupon, and it works. You can get a lot of great deals at Fry's via their, their newsletter, their email newsletter. So on ours, same sort of thing. Am I going to trust that people come back um, to my to my blog? Maybe, maybe I am on a schedule that I write once a month but people forget, they don't come back, etc. If you can convince them to subscribe in their inbox, they will get some notification that tells them new article, new post, new video, something. So two ideas to think about in general and then we'll get into specifics later. Give people the ability to, sh to share your stuff on their social media and give people the ability to subscribe to your articles easily. <clears throat> now all of the sites that I've been showing so far have been WordPress and like 98% of the time my company creates a WordPress website for people. Uh, because of of all of its uh, of all of its features, which we'll talk about, of course, uh, but it's not the only kind of blog that we can write. We've mentioned Joomla, Drupal, Wix, etc. There's many ways to write a blog, but in this class, we're going to focus on WordPress. So let's do this. Let's go to the website WordPress.org, O-R-G, WordPress.org. How many of you currently have a website made in any way? How many of you currently have a website? Okay. How many of you, if you have a website, is it made with WordPress? A couple of people. Okay. No problem. If you don't have it in WordPress, we'll be able to create a, a free WordPress account in a moment. But uh, over at WordPress.org, WordPress is web software you can use to create a beautiful website, blog, or app. We would we like to say that WordPress is both free and priceless at the same time. The core software is built by hundreds of community volunteers, and when you're ready for more than there are thousands of plugins and themes available to transform your site into almost anything you can imagine. Over 60 million people have chosen WordPress to power the place on the web they call home. And we'd love you to join the family. So WordPress.org is all about telling you what WordPress is, how do you use it. There's a download button right there, you don't have to click download. And then there's, it's easy as, here's a few steps on what you need to do. In general, it's showing you that WordPress is used by the New York Times and hundreds more, Rolling Stones, etc. Lots of companies and people use WordPress. It's very popular. You can even buy a WordPress t-shirt if you really like it. The point of WordPress.org is this is basically the technical document, the manual of WordPress over on support we have forums and we have documentation we can go read every single nuance about how to use WordPress right here we can also go to the forums and ask people 
how do I fix my problem? I'm having a problem here. Help me, etc. And uh, lots of talented people are there to answer your question. But the way WordPress works, the software itself is free. You can just download it right there. The problem is WordPress needs to be installed on a server. That's why it's telling you here. It's easy. Find a web host, download and install WordPress, read the documentation. Let's make some notes here. WordPress is free software, requires installation on a server, also known as a, a host, or um, what else, server, host, um, it has different names, but you then install it on a server. That means on your website. So, for example, victor.com. I can go, and we'll have a discussion on this later on, but I can go to some server or hosting or domain provider. I can go to some company and buy victor.com, and then I install WordPress onto it. So this, so this is saying needs you need a hosting provider by your domain name by your server hosting think about it like this in the real world, you have a house, and that house is on a street. The street is the domain name. The street is your address. I live at 123 Main Street. That's the address of my house. The house itself is the server, because my bed is there, my bedroom is there, my office is there, my books are there, my stuff is in the house, on the street. So a website is made out of a domain and a server. Just buying the domain name is not a complete website. A domain name is just victor.com, victorswebdesign.net, victorsbakery.org. The domain name is just the name, nothing else. The server or the hosting is also the other thing you need to buy. And that's where you upload your pictures. That's where you write your text. That's where you have WordPress. And we'll have a deeper discussion on what companies are available, how much does it cost, all of that later. But WordPress works this way. The software itself is free, but these two things are not. And the prices range a lot, and we'll talk about it later. So WordPress.org is the manual. It's where you download the software. It's where you get tech support. There is also WordPress.com. Let's check out the website WordPress.com. WordPress.com. Create an unfor unforgettable website. WordPress.com powers beautiful websites for businesses, professionals, and bloggers. Create a website. See plans. So WordPress.com, which is, you know, the cousin of WordPress.org, is where you would go to directly create a brand new WordPress website for free. We can go here and start right away using WordPress. Create a brand new website and get online. Under the plans, we have the free plan, the premium plan, the business plan. So WordPress.org is the manual. You download the software, you do tech support. At WordPress.com, start a new WordPress site right now for free. 
If you don't have a website, if you don't have a blog, if you don't have a WordPress website, we're going to use WordPress.com. If you do have a website, if you do have a blog, you can use your existing one. Perfectly fine. I would still recommend to follow along with us to create the WordPress.com, which we will do in a moment. I still recommend we create this one because it's free. We can delete it if we don't want it anymore. And even if you have your own website on your own domain, you can connect WordPress.com to it to give you more capabilities for free. Again, we'll talk about this in detail later, but I want to say here WordPress.org versus Word press.com. So here, get the software, you install it. The .com, create a site now. You don't have to download anything, you don't have to install anything, you just can sign up, you have a site. This is more work. Yes? So the .org itself is not a hosting provider. The only thing really you do on .org is to read the documentation and download the software. You don't use it at all to manipulate anything that you have. You get the software, you download the software, you read the manual at .org. That's all you do. Do you need that for the .com when we're starting a new website and all that? No, not, not really. The .org at all? Not really, no. This is just for uh, those of us that are not going to do the .com. We go to the .org you know, to read the manual, to get tech support, and all of that. Um, .org is free. Whatever is there is free, except for the t-shirts, I guess. And then at the .com, there's free or paid services. WordPress.org does not provide you with hosting services. They can suggest companies for that, but they at the moment don't, don't do that on .org. They do that at .com. Provide free or paid hosting. I need a place for my website, WordPress.org is going to direct you to other places, such as WordPress.com. And there are other places that we can go to as well. Again, we'll talk about it later. Some big names might be GoDaddy, Bluehost, etc. We'll talk about it later. But uh, another differentiator here is on .com, can use any domain name. WordPress.com, the default for free, has their branding, which means at WordPress.com, with WordPress.com, I can use it to set up victorsbakery.com. But at WordPress.com, it's going to be by default for free set up as victorsbakery.wordpress.com. And you may or may not care about this. The value for SEO, however, to care about this is, this is better. Having your own domain is better because all the traffic is going directly to your main website where you have the full control. So that's another item here, full control. And WordPress.com, some limits to your control. So you get a website very quickly, but it has their name on it unless you pay, and then you take their name away from it. But you still have some limits of control. Over here you have full control, but you have more to set up. Question? So you have full control here. When we talk about this, we will say such as such as more themes, plugins, widgets, and over here, less themes, no plugins, less widgets.
On the .org, you have the ability to change your theme, which is the design of your site. You can change the design of your site to thousands of different designs. You have less designs to choose from at .com. On .org, you have plugins. Plugins are like little apps that give you more features. I want the ability to chat with my customers. Have you been to a website that a little pop-up happens and says, Hi, would you like to chat with one of our specialists? Mm -hmm. You can do that with .org. That's a plugin. It's an extra feature that lets you do something more than the default. You cannot use any plugins, especially on the free version, on .com. The reason for that is oftentimes these plugins are created by third-party companies, by companies that are not officially the WordPress company. Anyone can create a WordPress plugin, anyone can create a WordPress theme. There's a whole cottage industry of people making money creating designs for WordPress and selling them, creating plugins for WordPress and selling them. And therefore, because other people besides the main WordPress company create a plugin or a theme, WordPress.com says, no plugins. We are not going to tech support someone else's plugin. That plugin broke your site? We are not going to tech support it. Therefore, they say, we will not allow any other plugins on the .com. And widgets are related to plugins. It's more features. You have some widgets and features on WordPress.com, but not every single one that you can find from a Google search. Again, they don't want to tech support something that they did not create, especially for free. That's why there's the free plan, the medium plan, and the expensive plan. The free plan gives you a free site. You'll have a WordPress.com as part of your name. You'll get hundreds, but not thousands, of free themes. You'll get three gigabytes of storage. You get community support. If you go over here, you get a custom domain. I'll get victor.com just like I wanted, but it starts at $8.25 per month. Still hundreds of themes. A little bit more storage. I get email and live chat support. No ads. Oh, they're going to put ads on my site, the free one. Advanced customization, video press, I'm not sure what that is, but you get it. And then the business one, well, it comes up to $24.92 per month, billed yearly. $24.92 per year, that's $300 for one year of WordPress.com. If you go to one of these other providers that we'll talk about later, for $300, that could last you for like three or five years of service. Whereas at .com, it lasts you for one year of service. Notice this is the only level that, that lets you have Google Analytics. Every other level doesn't. WordPress powers 26% of the internet. will say on the .org, you are tech support. You have to figure out, why does my plugin not work? Why does my theme not work? Why are my pictures missing? You have to be your own tech support. Over at .com, they have tech support. So if I'm busy running my company, making my products, being on the phone, doing payroll, and now I've got to start blogging, this is going to have you do more work. This is going to be less work for you to run your business. We've established that blogging is valuable, but now you need to figure out, do you want to then be in charge of all the nuts and bolts of blogging, or do you want to have some help? Well, it starts for good service at $8.95 a month. After all these pros and cons, I'm still going to rent, say, this one is the recommendation. Not this one. Well, everything I've talked about here. All of these reasons here. You have your own domain name, full control. You have all of these features, especially plugins. Let's say at a future point, I want to sell products on my website. Since I cannot use plugins, 
I cannot do e-commerce easily on the dot-com. Now, in this class, however, even though I'm saying I would like this one, in this class, we're going to use this one. Because I'm not going to ask you to go off to some provider like Bluehost and take out your credit card and buy a year of service for $80. These classes are free. There's no requirements in these classes. So, we're going to use WordPress.com for the purposes of the class to learn about how to write, what to write, what to do, what not to do. And then when you learn these things, then you apply it to your own website. If you have a website right now, you can apply what we're going to learn directly to your website if you want. But the thing about WordPress is that whatever you do on it right away, by default, pretty much is live. If I'm working on my home page and making changes, people will see those changes right away. If I'm making mistakes as I'm working on my site, people could see that right away. It's not like traditional web design where I would work on my personal computer to design my site and then upload it for everyone to see when it's ready. The default of WordPress is whatever changes you make, people will see right away. So I would still then say the reason that we're going to use WordPress.com in this site is to learn some basics of WordPress again but the WordPress my other WordPress class is the one where we get into much more detail maybe we want to learn a little bit about how the basis of WordPress works before I do it on my main site and break things and make mistakes so what we're gonna do together then in a moment is create a wordpress.com account. Again, it's going to be free. We can delete it if we no longer want it. Or you can use your existing site. Before we do that, any questions up to this point? I saw your hand first, yes? So Google Analytics are actually an function of the hosting, not necessarily it's going to be more about the hosting, yes, because Word, uh, Google Analytics works by adding uh, a special code to your site, so, and that's limited on some of these packages. Another question? Yes. I'm going to talk about it. Like I said, I'll talk about it a little bit later, but we will have, if we see on the syllabus, we have a time that we will talk about that. Yes? I just have a question. I have WordPress, but I didn't create it. I'm just going to be doing the blogging. How do I know if I have org or com.com? One quick way is that where whatever login address that you have, mm -hmm. if I have to go to victor.com slash login or whatever, most likely it's a .org. Okay. But if you have to go to wordpress.com slash login, it's most likely the wordpress.com version. All right, so we'll, we'll be at WordPress.com. Let's all do this. Let's go to WordPress.com and then click Create Website. You should see a button at the top that says Create Website, so click that. It asks, I've got six steps that I need to accomplish. You may have more or less. Don't worry about it if you have more or less, but if it's very different, raise your hand and I'll and I'll check it. Step one is says create your site today. What's your website about? So out of one of these topics here, hopefully one of these applies to what you're trying to do. Let's say I've got a website about um, technology. I want, my goal is I want to write about, I want to do like technology reviews. I want to write about technology. I like that, but secondarily, I want to make money off of this. So if I'm going to be writing about technology, my views and reviews on technology, which of these might it apply for in my case? I was about to go to writing in books. Maybe business will work, maybe even education. I'm educating people on my ideas. They all kind of seem nebulous enough that anyone could possibly work. There's no real wrong answer here, but this is just to help you 
create your content a little bit easier. It'll show you an interface that is more helpful and it'll help you get found by this audience. This can be changed later. But I'm going to try business and services. Most likely most of us will probably do business and service. Maybe I can do writing. I'm going to be writing on these topics. Again, doesn't quite matter. I'm going to go with business and service. Further deeper in here, business and service. Okay, are we talking about advertising, real estate, etc., and many more to choose from? There it is, technology and computing. So try to find a topic that works best for your site. If you don't know what you're going to write yet, don't worry. Just uh, set something up here. We can change it later. Um, but we want to have something to work with. Mine on step two, it says, what would you like your homepage to look like? This will help us figure out what kinds of designs to show you. Would you like a design that shows your latest posts, a welcome to my site, a grid of my latest posts, an online store? I'm going to go with um, my latest posts. How, how do you choose on that by the, by the search engine? It doesn't matter for the search engine. It matters more for your design okay. and how you want people to read your stuff. I mean, the fastest way to get to your website would be something simple or something simple. The fastest way for a person to get yeah. to your website? Uh, none of these matters because if they have your web address, they'll just type your web address and go to it. If they search, again, this design doesn't have it very much at all to do with SEO. So if people search, it's not going to be a big detriment to have a different design. So it really doesn't quite matter what this one is. I'm going to say a list of my latest posts. My website, my particular website, I'm going to write articles about technology. So I want the latest articles to be shown. Perhaps what you want is on the home page to first have some sort of welcome info, and then they can click the button for blog. But the purpose of that is to then say, okay, you might, like, you might like this design, or that design, or this design. Again, not a lot to choose from at this point, but it can be more to choose from later on. You might not have any of the same ones that I'm seeing, and that's okay. But um, I don't know, I'm just going to choose any one of these. Um, I'll choose button. If you don't see button, pick any one you like. We'll see, of course, later on how to change some of these things, but go ahead and click any theme, any design that you like. My step four says, let's find a domain. Choose a custom domain or a free WordPress.com address. So at the top here, I can start to pick a name. Question. I just bought my domain name yesterday and it told me it's available, so I don't know about it. Mm -hmm. uh, let me take a quick look. If you bought it, it should not be available. Mm -hmm. uh, are you sure it's not telling me it's available at WordPress.com? Well, no, I mean, that, that's what I put in. And it was just yesterday. I wouldn't worry about it because you can see it anyway. Uh, Alright, so it says enter a domain or a keyword. But again, we're using the free version of, of WordPress. I'm not going to ask you to pay for any of this. So we're going to assume that we're going to get the the free one, something.wordpress.com. So let's say then I'm going to make a website called um, Victor's Tech Tips. And it might tell you, okay, well, Victor's Tech Tips.wordpress.com is available. There is a Victor's Tech Tips.com included in the premium version, which was $20, $29 a month. So any of these other suggestions are not going to be free. All of them to say upgrade, that's their, that's their nice way of saying these are not free. The upgrade ones are not free. I'm going to select 
this one. And this can be changed, of course. And if you're doing it for the purpose of the class to learn this stuff, it really doesn't matter what we put here. I could make up, you know, kittycat.com or whatever. I can make up anything I want here. I can edit it, I can delete it whenever I want. So don't stress too much about getting the perfect name here. On another day, we'll talk about other domain providers where you want to get your name and how much that costs. But here I'm going to select victorstechtips.wordpress.com. Make a note of this. I always forget to mention this because at a certain point it's obvious, but I forget about beginners. victorstechtips.wordpress.com is going to be my main domain. Whatever yours is, is going to be in that format. And the note that you need to make is, if I choose victorstechtips.wordpress.com, my login will be http colon slash slash victorstechtips.wordpress.com slash wp-admin. Whatever yours is, you're going to have at the end wp-admin. That's the default. Everyone gets that. Yes, we will be able to log into wordpress.com, but we're going to see the pros and cons of that. This is going to be a better way to log in to edit my site. And also the default is that if I have, if I went to GoDaddy and I bought victorstech.com, it's still going to be by default wp-admin. Every WordPress address, every WordPress kind of site has a login like this. So if you bought your name elsewhere and it's WordPress, most likely this is the way to log into it. If you have a WordPress site on another service, most likely that's the login. For us right now, because we're creating this .com version, whatever it's telling you there, .wordpress.com, you will log into it in a moment, wp-admin. So I'll select And it's going to tell us one more time, do you want the free one, the business, the premium one? No, I'm going to stick with the free one. Click Select. It will ask for your email address to confirm that you are a legitimate person, not a spammer. And so put in your real email address there, or you can make it up. For the purposes of this class, I can make up all of these things, and it won't matter. That's what I'm going to do right now, actually. Victor at victoriscool.com. The reason why you might want to put a real address is because it will send you an email confirmation to unlock every feature of WordPress.com. We will be able to do what we need to do in this class without um, confirming a real email address. But if you want to use it for real, legitimately, you should put a real email address. And we will be able, later on when we talk about a real hosting provider, we will be able to transfer our WordPress.com over to a real one like HostMonster, whatever we talk about later. Or we can delete it and move on. It doesn't matter. So I have an email. I have an, e an email address there. It, this username most likely will be the same name as what your address was, your web address. You can change it to anything that you want. But whatever you change these to, make sure you write them down somewhere. If you don't remember what you wrote, you'll have to retrieve the password. And then you'll have to create a password here. You can use the same password as before that you've used before, make a new password, doesn't matter.
And then in small print, just like every other website, this one says, by creating an account, you agree to our fascinating terms of service. This is where it has that list of what you will and will not use the service for, you will not abuse it, you will not do this and that, you will use it for this, etc. I don't have it memorized what it tells me in there, I've never had a problem with them. The only one I've really had a problem with the terms of service has been Amazon affiliates. Everything else, they've never had a problem. Click create my account. It's going to set something up. Anyone having any trouble at this point so far? I'll click continue. Show me my site. Maybe a quick tour. Just click OK on all of that, whatever. Here's my design so far. All right, so does everyone have the WordPress.com site set up or your own site? Does anyone need any help? WordPress.com, as we're seeing, is the place where we can quickly create a website, quickly create a blog. And we were writing the pros and cons of both of these. One more reason why you want the .org version is um, traffic is directed to you. Whereas .com, traffic is directed to WordPress.com. This may not be so bad. There are plenty of people out there that have the .com version and have a big online presence and traffic and all of that. But then they supplement that with an eBay store or a uh, uh, an Etsy store or something else where they're making money because we will not be able to put Amazon affiliate links or Google AdSense ads on our .com version. Again, you have the full control on your .org. But for the purposes of this class, we're using the free .com just to get started. WordPress.com is also somewhat of a social network. A social network can be defined as a place that people go to share content, reply to each other, like each other's stuff, see something new. That's what you do on Facebook, that's what you do on Twitter, that's what you do on Pinterest. WordPress.com lets you do those things too. I can write an article, I can like someone else's article, I can share someone else, they can find me. It's somewhat like a social network. That's valuable because it'll help me get more traffic. We'll explore that a little later. But the problem is that WordPress.com can be kind of confusing to navigate. If you've got your own .org, it's going to be very straightforward. Here's your website, here's your login. WordPress.com has here's your website, here's your login, here's your control panel, here's your dashboard, here's your reader, lots of different things to look at. On the top left corner, do you see something that says my site? and something that says Reader. If you click on Reader, this is like the social network aspect of things. These are sites that I'm following. These are recommendations that WordPress is giving me to find other sites. These are the things that I've liked on WordPress. Well, I might not have any use for any of those. But on the flip side, these could be valuable for me. What if I create a lot of great articles on WordPress.com where I get likes? Traffic. What if I get other people discovering my site? What if I get people following my site, subscribing to my site? So these things do have a value, that it helps me get found, it helps me get traffic and such, but it adds to the confusion. Up here. Under my sites, this sort of control panel shows up on the side here where I can check some of my basic stats, upgrade my plan, write blog posts, make pages and such. We'll talk about the difference a little later. Change the theme, the menu, 
share my site and all of that. And if you notice at the very top, I can create another WordPress site. I can create as many WordPress.com sites as I want. Well, as many WordPress.org sites as well. But I can create as many WordPress.com sites as I want linked to this one email address. So I can create one site all about my tech reviews. And I can create another site all about my political views. And I can create another site all about my comic books. All of those different sites can be tied together to one main account, and I can manage them all here under my sites. You can do triple the work with more sites, but if the topic of your site is very different, you might not want to have them all on one site. Then its message is getting muddled. Why is this site writing about food and comic books and technology? It's way too different. But if I'm writing about food, I could write about baking and cooking and restaurant reviews and kitchen utensil reviews. All of that relates. And as I said on the note here, wp-admin this is training wheels. At WordPress.com this panel here is training wheels for you to quickly do things. But if you go to WordPress.org, the manual does not mention this at all. If you buy a book on WordPress, no book that I've seen is going to mention this. If you go look up tutorials on how to use WordPress, I never see this. This is training wheels. We want to use the real version of WordPress, and that's by going to your address slash wp dash admin. Let's do this right away. Let's get used to going to this address rather than back to wordpress.com. That's going to show you the social network aspect. That's going to show you the training wheels. I want to go to the full power, which is the main WordPress dashboard. So let's do this. Type your address slash wp dash admin. What's that? WP-admin, the dashboard. This is what you want. This is what every book will teach you, what every article will instruct you on. This is the dashboard, the full power of WordPress. No more training wheels. But now suddenly a lot of new things to look at, and we're going to touch on some of them. But again, take the WordPress class where we get into much more detail. So we need, wherever you're at, you need to be at the WP-admin screen like me. If you're not there, of course, call me over, but everyone should be on this screen. There's a lot of screens here on the left. Dashboard, store, posts, media, etc. And the default is you're looking at the home view of the dashboard screen. And here I can see some quick things about helpful resources, some tips. It's telling me to verify my email. I get one post and two pages. So far, we'll see what those are later. I get three gigabytes of space to upload. I haven't used very much of it. Question? Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Never mind. I, I just realized what happened. Yes, that's right. Okay. Any activity is there. If anyone has commented or if I've written any articles, they show up there. Quick draft, stats, what's hot. Maybe this is sometimes inspiration. What's hot here tells you maybe inspiration of what to write. top blogs, top posts. Again, everyone that creates content at WordPress.com is all linked together, like a social network. And the value of that is I could see what other people are writing and what's popular to help me develop my own writing. We're going to look at one screen, then we'll take a short break. There's a lot of screens to look at, but on the bottom left, hover over 
put your mouse over settings and then click general. That's the same as simply clicking settings that also takes you to general. Here is the screen where you can change some general options of your of your site. My site title currently is Victor's Tech Tips and I saw that the way that that looks is like this. It says Victor's Tech Tech tips all run together. I want a capital letter, spaces, apostrophe. Well, that's what you can edit right there on the site title. So most likely you will change that to be human readable, Victor's Tech Tips, rather than the basic computer readable version. So you can change that. Then there's tagline. In the SEO class, we talk over and over about keywords. Keywords are what people search for on Google, on Bing, on Yahoo, etc. I showed the example of the Mexican restaurant. Someone is going to search for, what is Huitla Coche? That is an article that we've written for them. That one is a popular article on the site because people search for that. They heard about this thing, Huitla Coche. What is Huitla Coche? They search for it on Google, the client shows up. I think on that one they show up number one. And so it's about keywords, in short. Keywords are helping us, helping you get found. So we often have to think about anything that we write in WordPress is about keywords. So a tagline here, and I'm not saying literally write some keywords. I'm not going to write something like technology, comma, review, comma, Motorola. That's not what this is about. You're going to write here one concise sentence that explains what your site is about, thinking in terms of what your keywords are. So, my site is all about tech reviews. So I'm going to say something like news, reviews, news and reviews on the latest technology. That sort of tagline is a little better because it has the keyword news. Right? Technology news. Someone search for technology news, I've got the keywords. Someone searches for latest technology reviews, I've got that keyword. This sentence should not be a paragraph. The sentence, try to keep it within approximately the size of this box. You can, clear, uh, you can obviously write a little bit more and go past the box. I'm telling you, don't write a huge sentence here. This is one of the places where we're going to think about writing keywords. But don't beat yourself up by writing a huge sentence to try to reach every demographic. The actual content, the actual articles that we'll be writing are the places where we can further get detailed. Yes? How did you get into the site? You went to the settings, writing? No, general. General, general settings, yes. If I have to think about keywords in the tagline here, shouldn't I also think about keywords here? Yes. If I simply leave this as Victor's Tech Tips, that might be fine because it's got the keyword of tech and the keyword of tips. That's the name of my company. But if I had a, if I had a very esoteric name, esoteric means no one knows what it means, so esoteric, no one knows what esoteric means. PMD Interactive is an esoteric name. Like, what does that mean? Does it stand for something? What does it mean? What do you do? No one can tell. That's why the tagline is very important. But I could also write something like PMD Interactive Web Design Services. The official name of the company is PMD Interactive. But I could take the space up there for the title as well, thinking in terms of keywords, to write a keyword or two that makes sense up here. And again, I would not go overboard by going past the limit of that box. Why? Well, take the SEO class, we can go into every single nuance of why. For the moment, just trust me. Time zone. It says we're in UTC0. Where in the world is UTC0? London. Greenwich Mean Time. We're not in London at the moment. Last time I checked. So what's our UTC offset? No one knows. So we'll go to Los Angeles. If you click the box, 
and start typing L-O-S, because there's lots of cities listed here, and they're not really in alphabetical order, they're in continent order. Click the box and start typing L-O-S, Los Angeles, Pacific Time. If you, <coughs> if you don't change that, the worst that happens is that all your times say, oh, you wrote this at 3 in the morning. You wrote this on Saturday at 9 p.m. It's going to be the wrong time zone, which might not really matter, but uh, I would recommend setting the proper time zone so that it's best for your readers. If you want to change the date, the way the dates are written on your site, you can. I'm going to leave it alone. If you want to change the time format, you can change it. I'm going to leave it alone. If you want to change the, the day of the week, you can. I will leave it alone. And the language. Is your blog, what's the language your blog is primarily written in? Because maybe I'm writing my blog primarily in Spanish or Hebrew or Tagalog or something else and I want that audience to find my articles so I can choose the different languages for them to find it. It says here if you want to change your interface so that it's in Spanish you have to go over to that link there. I'm going to leave mine on English. I'm targeting an English audience, English speaking audience, so I'll leave it there. So if you want to do the Spanish audience, you want to do that link? No, if you're looking for a Spanish audience, you just change this to Spanish. Oh, right. If you want your icons here to be in Spanish, you follow the link. Okay. And most likely there will be Spanish for Spain and Spanish for Mexico, so you want to choose the right version of Spanish. Right. The last thing on this general screen is a blog icon. This is valuable, again, for branding. Right now, our site is just a very generic little person right there. I want to have my company logo because as I write these articles, my logo will appear on the article. And in the concepts of marketing, of branding, this is important. That Nike logo is so famous, the word is not even needed anymore. The McDonald's M is so famous, it doesn't need anything else besides the yellow and the red. Some of these logos are so famous that they've built such, such a a name for themselves over and over seeing those logos. This is also valuable for you. Not a lot for SEO, but for the concepts of branding. Whenever someone sees that article, if they share that article to Facebook, I want my logo to follow my article. I want people to think about my company as they see my articles with my logo. I don't have a logo to upload, so I'll do that later, but you should do it at some point. When you make any changes to any of these screens, remember at the bottom to click Save Changes. We will not look at every single one of these settings, but I want to look at one more before we take our break. Very quickly, let's look at Discussion. Under Settings, Discussion. The default of WordPress is that when you write an article, anyone can then comment on it. That has some value for SEO because it shows the search engines that your site is active. People are writing and following up on what you've written. The search engines look at so much information to, to rank you. One of the things that they look at is, is this site active or not? One sign of activity is that people are commenting. The good news is that WordPress by default lets anyone write what they want on your site. The bad news is that by default WordPress lets anyone write what they want on your <laughs> site. So any crazy person can write any crazy thing on your site by default. There's a couple of settings here that I recommend to change to have a more secure and better site. If you scroll down here, one of the items it says allow people to post comments on new articles, yes or no. If I turn that to no, then people will no longer be able to comment on my site. I don't recommend that one. I recommend the next one down here. Scroll down. Before a comment appears, comment must be manually approved. That's the one I recommend. I leave the one on the top on, and then I turn this one on. Because that means any person, any crazy person can write any crazy thing as a comment, but it will not appear until I approve it. I will get an email. I'll get an email and it says, Johnny wrote something on your site. 
and I'll get a little preview of it and a button that says approve, deny, spam. And right from my email I can click spam and it never shows up. I will also see all comments that people wrote here under comments and I can approve them, delete them, or spam them. So the reason I don't select this top one is allow people to post comments on new articles. Some articles I want people to be able to comment on and some I don't, perhaps. Some, com some articles I write maybe are so controversial I don't want to invite the crazy people to write negative things. But if I turn this off, none of my new posts will have automatically the way for people to comment. I think that's too hard, or too harsh, too, too far. I leave it on for clients, and then we have active <coughs> must manually approve. Whoever the administrator is gets an email that says, here's a new article, usually we are the administrator, and then we approve it or deny it. That way we can craft the posts, I mean the comments that appear. Keep it on topic. Don't let the spammers in. And it doesn't have to be spam. Maybe I'm writing all about cats, and someone's writing about their dog. I don't want that on my site. So it's not spam, but I just don't want it to appear on the site. And that's okay for me to guide the course of my content. It's my site. It's my content. It's not anyone's free speech violations. That applies to the federal government. I have my site, my property, and I don't want these comments on my site. It's like this. If a crazy person is on my front lawn yelling at me, I can say, get off my property and yell at me on the sidewalk where the cops can get you. Same thing here. Get off my property, writing those crazy comments, write your own blog, do what you want. Secondly, turn off comment author must have a previously approved comment. I used to leave this on, but now I don't. The reason for this is spammers, spam bots are getting so smart nowadays. Old spam bots would come to the site, write a bunch of gibberish and the link, and then post it. The purpose of the spam bot is to add links to their site to try to sell something. And so the old spam bots would very obviously be spammers because they would add nothing of value to the conversation. So I would approve the comments. But these things are getting so smart. I'm starting to see this wave of spam where they write a comment that almost looks like it's real. They write something like, I found your site recently and it's great. I really like your articles. I would have been tricked into clicking approve, but that comment could work for any site. I found your site and it's great. I like to read it. That doesn't have anything to do with any specific kind of blog. So what those spam bots, the new generation, are trying to do is, if I approve one comment of theirs already and it wasn't an over-the-top spam comment, they're in the door. The next time, if I never turn this on, next time their comment would automatically go through. Because they tricked me with their very first congratulatory comment. I fell for it. I approved one comment, and now their next comments are coming in. To be the most secure, and for the clients, I do it like that. I turn off this one, and every comment that is added, we have to approve. Yes, it's more work. Now you're going to have to look at every comment. But actually, WordPress has a built-in spam fighting feature that works really well. Sometimes it gets through the spam guard, but I still don't want it to go right to the site until I approve it. Again, what if it's off-topic? What if you're writing something on my post completely off-topic that I don't want to, I don't want to hear? It's not that it's spam, it's just that it's off-topic. Everything else here is fine. You can look at it on your own. All the defaults besides that are fine. Go ahead and click Save at the bottom. We'll take one more break, one more short break, and when we come back, we'll, we'll work a little bit more. It's uh, 12.22. We'll take a short break until 12.30, and at 12.30 we'll go on. 12.30.